You want to know my animation secrets, do you now, little rascals? Well, here's a concise Clip Studio Paint animation tutorial. Keep in mind the animation part of the title, okay? I won't be teaching you some art mumbo-jumbo, just strictly animation biz. So if you don't know the basics of using an art program, eh, sucks to be you. Watch another video? So first, for this tutorial we will be using Clip Studio Paint X. X is the version of Clip Studio that has better animation features, which is why it's the more costly of the two options, but definitely it's worth it in my opinion. But before we do anything, I should specify that this is a sponsored video. Clip Studio Paint reached out and we're like, yo, wanna do like an animation tutorial? I was like, yeah, I do. So yeah, that's what we're doing right now. Coolios. But don't get me wrong, Clip Studio Paint has been a program I have been using for literal years before they even reached out. Like, I've been using it since 2016 when I was like, what, 13? I've been using it for so long and, you know, that should give you an idea of how good it is because I haven't switched for that long. So yeah. Okay, so the first thing you need to know upon opening the program is you need to pick what kind of work you want to make. We aren't doing comics nor illustrations, we're doing animation. So click on the little video button. Now upon opening this, you might be thinking, Oh no, this is so much text! This is overwhelming! Mission abort! But shh, listen. I don't even know what half of this stuff does and I've been animating in this program for years. Hey, hey, this video isn't a professional animation tutorial. Don't get that idea. This is a Katrinci animation tutorial, which means dumbassery is expected. Anyhow, you should really only focus on a few things. First off, the file name. The file name is pretty self-explanatory, and I tend to leave it up for later, as you can always change it. The presets, on the other hand, are pretty useful. They're essentially the canvas and resolution size of your animations. They are useful to you, unless you want to play around with the size and resolution, of course. Now, I would recommend using a 1920 by 1080 uh, size for your animations, as it's the best preset, in my opinion. I do tend to lower the resolution, though. What does that do, you might be wondering? Well, basically, it makes your art more, like, pixely, but it lowers the file size, and it's not really that noticeable, so essentially you don't lose anything unless you want really crisp-looking animations. Next, I suggest leaving the blank space area as it is. Don't touch it, don't ruin it like I did. <laughs> it's pretty much the part of the canvas that won't be included when you export your final animation. What does that mean? Well, you see these little borders? Okay, everything inside these borders will be exported. Essentially, you will be able to see it in the final cut. But everything outside the borders, say goodbye to that, you won't see it. Okay, okay. Another thing you should worry about is the frame rate. What is that? Well, the frame rate is essentially how many drawings there are in a second of your animation. It can be whatever you want it to be. But I recommend using anywhere between 12 and 24 frames per second. That's, that's what I use. And the final thing you should keep in mind is the playback time, which is essentially how big your timeline will be in terms of frames. Example, say you want to animate a one second animation and you're animating on 12 frames per second. That means you should make your playback time 12 frames per second as well, essentially 12. <laughs> but if you're me and you don't like thinking about all that business and you just like to have a preset made for everything, Starting out with a playback time of 50 can be good as well. You can always change it after all. Okay, so now you made your animation. What do you do now? Well, for now we're going to focus on the timeline. First thing to keep note of is how to create an animation folder. Creating a normal folder is a little different from creating an animation swag folder, okay? Essentially, an animation folder displays the frames on the timeline in sequential order. While the regular folder kind of doesn't do that, it will just make everything kind of weird looking and stupid. So yeah, don't use regular folders if you want to make an animation. I mean, you will use them, but for other purposes. As such as organizing singular images and animation folders. I I'm going to show you later. After you've made your animation folder, you create an animation cell. But before you do, let me explain the different types of layers. What are layers? Well, it's essentially the animation frame, cell, whatever you want to call it, but like the type. I, I, I'm i bad at explaining. In Clip Studio, there's the raster layer and the vector layer. I am bad with words, so let me show you the difference. More on how to do this later. But yeah, raster layers are better to sketch on, while vector layers are better for line art, because it's easier to clean up the messy lines and mistakes. Not 
as we're just starting, we're going to use the raster layer type, which is created very simply by just clicking on the create animation cell button. An animation cell is essentially a frame. To delete a frame, you click on delete specific cells button. And the final button to keep track of is the onion skin button, which essentially lets you see what was on the previous layer, but on a lower opacity, making you have an easier time from transitioning from one frame to the other. So now that we have the bear's basics down, let's sketch out a quick animation. We're gonna need a brush. Clip Studio Paint comes with several pre-made brushes, but if you perhaps want a more fancy brush, you can find it on the asset store and import it into the program. Again, this isn't like an art tutorial, so find the answers on how to use the asset store elsewhere, gamer. <laughs> But seriously, Clip Studio Paint's asset store is genuinely a blessing. It's one of the biggest highlights of getting the program, legally, as you won't be able to use the asset store unless you get it legally. So get that program legally, goddammit. So you're just sitting over there doing your quick little animation, and you're thinking, gosh, I just want to copy and paste a few of these frames. It will be so much easier to just adjust them instead of just redrawing the frame over and over again. Well, in Clip Studio, it's a bit tricky to copy and paste. Onto the timeline, I mean. But worry not, for this wouldn't be an animation tutorial if I wasn't here to help you out. To copy a frame, you just have to find the specific frame you want to copy inside the sidebar, and then copy it and paste it. CTRC and CTRV, basically. And after that, you right-click on the timeline and find the proper copied version of the frame. And shebang! There you go. Now that we have the sketch done, next up is the line art. Remember how I mentioned vector layers? Well, this is where they come into play. Creating a vector layer inside the timeline in Clip Studio Paint can be pretty tricky, but I've figured it out. Basically, you create a raster layer first, and then you delete it immediately. And after that, you go back to the sidebar that showcases all of your frames, and click on create a new vector layer. And voila! You have created a vector layer that is visible inside the timeline. Jesus, you're a genius. When it comes to drawing on vector layers, I can't stress enough how important and useful the vector eraser is. It makes your life so much easier. Like, guys, here's a quick way how to make one. And there you go. Now you can just erase wandering lines more easily. So you did your line art, now what? Well, it's time for a coloring, of course. Uh, just use the bucket tool. That's my best advice. Like, don't color things manually, are you insane? Here are the settings of my two most used bucket tools. Much recommend you just copy and paste the settings, so... Yeah, I'm not giving you an art tutorial. Once again, this is an animation tutorial, we're not getting sidetracked. Next up is the shading. Use clipping masks. They make your life easier, trust me. Also, Clip Studio Paint's layer styles are a blessing as well. There's so many options to change the layers to make them look so fancy. Oh, so fancy. Look at this. Oh, oh, yeah. And my final tip, if you want to get fancy schmancy panning shots or zooms, use Clip Studio's reading option. It's right there. It's pretty self-explanatory. You create a keyframe, you move the canvas. You create a keyframe, you move the canvas. You create a keyframe, you move... You get the point. Don't overuse this tool as the program will get super laggy and you might even and might even crash on you if you have a weaker computer. And finally, we have to export the animation. How does one do that? Well, basically, you go to File and then you go to Export and finally you click to Export Movie. And shebang! Name your file and export that animation, bro. And that's pretty much everything I use while making my animations in Clip Studio Paint. I hope this tutorial was helpful. Okay, bye!